Hi guys, it's Roy from Belados 3 d here with another Blender video tutorial. And in this video, I will be continuing with the theme of the treasure chest with a low poly shovel and pickaxe, which you can see rotating on your screen now. Okay, let's get on with this. Okay, I'm gonna stop the animation and reset. That. I'm going to hide my turntable because we don't need that um, and I'm going to go into UV editing so that I can see the texture sheet here I'm just going to quickly Alt G Alt R Alt G Alt R and select those two and move them to the side I'm going to leave them there for reference and reset my cursor with Shift C right Oops. And <clears throat> first things first, I'm going to turn my screen keys on so that you can see what I'm doing. No use doing this if you don't know what I'm doing. Okay. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use an add on. And if we go up to uh, edit preferences and wait for the preferences to load up, and if we search on the add-on section for extra you'll see add mesh extra objects just tick that and close that down so now when we press shift a we have some extra objects here in the um, add menu in the mesh menu and what I want is pipe joints pipe T joint and uh, it's rather huge but uh, what I want to do is reduce that I'm going to reduce that Let's see, do, 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 divisions down to eight. And I'm going to reduce the radius right down quite a bit lower to about there. Okay, we can close that down. Now what I need to do is go into edit mode. And I'm gonna rotate this um, on the Y with the R and the Y key and type in at minus 90 degrees and that should bring it uh, around to the right size i'm just going to reposition that so it's more central and in fact what i think i'll do is go back into object mode right click it and set origin to geometry and then go into the little menu here which is open with the n button up to uh, transforms and i'm going to hover over the location and press backspace to reset all the transforms on there and that should be in the right position now so let's uh scale this right the way down in edit mode with the s key so that it's about the same size as our reference model there about to do there i would say roughly um yeah about there and then we're going to just move that up to about the right height so what we like what we need to do now is I'm going to go into X-ray mode with Shift Alt and Z and I'm going to select all the bottom edges there. I'm just going to drag that down to about the same height as the other one, a little bit lower, just about there. Okay, so that's the main shaft of our uh, handle there. Okay, so what I want to do with these edges selected, I want to press Shift and D to duplicate the edges, right click to snap them back and just move them up slightly. Because what I want to do is I want to make this piece here. And to do that, I will now press E and then right click to set that and then just scale it up just slightly, just a tiny bit. There we go to about there and then E again to extrude press C on the Z axis and we'll move that down to um, about there and now what I want to do is scale that right in like so and then if I switch to the uh, right orthographic view with the three button and zoom back in with the um, delete button on the uh, 
numpad. I'm just going to move that back. And I'm going to put another loop with Control R in there. Scale it out slightly. So it's about there. It should do it. Okay, and what I want is this end piece. If I select this whole end with Alt left click, I'm going to S to scale on the Y axis. Bring it in like so. Okay, I'm just going to come out into object mode and I'm going to bring this in so it's a bit closer so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, now we need to make the, the shovel piece and the shovel piece is a very simple plane. I'm going to press Shift A and bring in a plane. Obviously, it's the wrong angle and everything, so we're going to edit mode and then R90 on the X axis, and we enter that. And we'll scale that right down. So now we want to bring it down to the right place, just about there. And if I select the bottom edge there, I want to bring it down to roughly the same as that. So about there should do the job. Okay, and let's scale this on the X just a little bit, just to bring it out to give it a bit more size. Right, so as you can see, we've got a curve down the bottom there. And that curve has got one, two, three edge loops going straight up. So if I press Control R to scroll the wheel up, and put in three edge loops. So I can now go into vertice mode. I can select these four vertices and just move them up just a little bit. Now there should do it. And then select the end two vertices and bring them up a little bit further to round them off a bit more. And there we have our main um, shape of our uh, shovel there. Okay, now as you can see, the other shovel is slightly curved. Okay, and the way this is done is if you look at this one, you've got a loop cut across the center there, and, a, and um, so we'll put that in there and put that in right in the middle just there. So now, what I need to do is I need to take in edge mode with the two button this piece, this piece, and this piece, and just bring them back to about there, and then. Finally, just this centerpiece, just a touch more, just a touch more there. And now we need to um, give it some thickness. As you can see, there's a little bit of thickness on that on that uh, piece there. So we will go to the back into object mode, go into the modifier tab, click add modifier, and click solidify, and that will give it a little thickness. And uh, it's going the wrong way, so we will take it down. The opposite way and bring it out um, that far and I think we need to move it back in this way a little bit more it's a bit more central and there we go we have the main um, aspects of the the shovel already I'm going to apply that modifier with control A and I'm gonna right click I'm gonna um, Select the, the um, what is this piece called? The blade of the shovel, and shift right click the handle, and press Control J to join them together. I'm going to right click and select Shade Smooth. Now what we need to do is just make some minor adjustments. First of which is in this piece here. I think I need to bring that back a bit further. So I just want to select that and then bring that back to about there. I'll bring it back a little bit further. Just about there. And I think maybe I can actually, with that still selected, select this piece and just move that forward a little bit just there. Okay. Right. Okay. Now I think I'm going to need to press three to go into face mode. Select the 
front piece is. And just move that back just a touch. I think that's a little bit of a little bit of fat. And then it, two to go into edge mode with these pieces. And the, select these on the the bottom here and just bring them back slightly. So it's that comes to a bit of a point there. Okay, so we also need to readjust this. This time I think we need to select the whole ring and then just scale that down. Okay, there we go. Now let's get some colour on this before we do anything else, just to get an idea of what we're um, looking at. So as you can see on this one, we've got this section here, and we actually have two colours on this, there are two little browns here. And on this section, where are they? Ah, right down here, the metal piece here. So let's go into this one that we're creating, and let's select all of the blade and all of the connect, all of the connecting piece, and press U and R to reset the uh, UV islands. And then hovering over the UVs, press A, S, and 0 to scale it right the way down. And then we can move it down to the metal just here. And of course, it's not displaying on the model yet, because we haven't had the added the material. So all we need to do is plus, and then choose this little drop down, and we'll choose the palette there. And it now has the right colour. Now the shading's a little bit off on that at the moment, uh, but we will sort that out in a, in a second. If we go back into here, we're going to select the handle, U and R to reset the UVs, A, S and 0 to bring it in, and we'll move it up to this piece of wood, um, brown, just here. Okay, so we have the, uh, the shovel there. Now, the reason for the shading errors here, er issues here, is because we've got it on shade smooth, but we haven't defined any of the edges, we haven't added any, added any bevels or... Um, um, normal um, smoothing um, we will do that just shortly but first things first what I want to do just double check how I did it on this yes I did it on that way let's go into the model here and I want to go into edge select with number two and select this one and this one this one and this one and press F and if I all click that it will select them and we will press F on there. I'm going to go into uh, vertex mode and select these two and press the J key. It will join them. Now I just want to select this central one and just bring it out slightly. And we will repeat the same for this side here. So if I do these pieces here, fill them, and then this piece here and fill that. And then in vertex, let's select these two and press J and then the central piece just bring it out slightly there okay now on to sorting out these normal directions we will go to the object data tab on the menu at the side here find normals and open it up and then click auto smooth and there we go that smooths the uh, um, the normal directions um, it's a little bit harsh we don't want these these um, sharp lines here so what we'll do is I'll move that up to about 50 yes about 50 should do the job okay and as you can see now it's nice and smooth but all the edges are pretty sharp and they're a little bit too sharp so what we need to do now is go to the modifier tab and add a bevel modifier which again affects all of the normals and um, which means what we will do is go to the limit method on the bevel and select angle and then change that to 50 as well no not zero 50 and that should in theory sort those normals out now that doesn't look as deep as that one does it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into here and press 3 for face select on there 
and I'm gonna select this face, this face, this face, and this face, and just move it in slightly that way. And then select this face, this face, and these three faces here, uh, four faces here, oops. Just move that forward slightly, and that should give it a bit more, a bit more definition, a bit more shape. Though I think that's giving that a little bit too much, so let's take this, and this, and move it back slightly, so. There we go. Yeah, I think that's about right. Um, let's look at these bevels. I think the bevels are a little bit too much, so let's bring the bevels right down. Um, to point naught, naught five. I think that's a little bit too sharp, isn't it? Slightly too sharp. Nope. And with the bevels, it's a, it's a matter of uh, adjusting the bevels to get the uh, shape that you want on it. I think that should be about maybe 0.003 and maybe bring that down to 40 yes I think I think that's about right this edge here. I may have to do the beveling on this manually actually because it seems to be I think I'll do the beveling on this manually um, it seems to be a bit uh, that's the problem with the uh, the bevel modifier on, on this it's, uh, sometimes it just doesn't work right, sometimes it works right, uh, so let's uh, select this edge loop here and we'll give that a bevel with control and B and we will just slide that out like so and I have a feeling the reason for this no that's right and we'll slide that out just about like so yep that looks about right so we'll do the same with these edges here Shovel, blade, and select these corners. And control B. And we'll, we don't need that many. That's it. And we'll just bring them in like so. That's better. And again, do we need it at the top? Yes, we'll need it at the top. We will select all the edges around ooh, around here. Press control, control B and bevel them out like so. And there we have it. Right, now let's add some detail to this. And I, I still think that's not quite right. That's, that's still not quite right. Let's have a look at this bevel weight there. And bring it down to 40. Yes, that's much better. Yeah, that. <coughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's 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 much much better there. That look, does look much better. Okay, it still has these lines a little bit too defined, but it is a low poly style model. Um, let's see if forty five can bring it up a little bit. Not one hundred eighty. Yes, I'd say that would be better. Um, let's go back into here. I think part of the reason for this is simply the curve on this is not enough.
Oopsie. Let's have no. Let's bring that back a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, that looks a little bit better. Uh, I think that central piece there needs coming back. So I'm going to hide this bit. And uh, circle select. Just in there. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Just bring them back a little bit more. Okay, and then bring that back. That's much better. Okay, let's put a bit of detail onto this. Um, first things first, let's give this a little curve and with a, uh, an edge loop on each side, I'm going to press X. S, X, and 0 to straighten that uh, loop up and do the same with this one, S, X, and 0. And I'm just going to bring that down just slightly. And then the same with this one, I'm going to bring it up just slightly. It just gives it a little bit of uh, character to it. And again with the this bit here, let's uh, select all of the edges on the end. I just want to scale that up a little bit. Right, the same on this side. And scale that up just a touch. And that gives that a little bit more character. And again, on the... Um, on the uh, main piece here, um, we need to put some edge loops in here. So I'm going to put four edge loops. Three, two, three by scrolling up and bring them in like so because what I want to do oh, that seems to have uh, I'm just going to press M and merge by distance just to clear up some of them extra vertices I accidentally created there um, don't know how that happened let's take Two of these edge loops and I'm just gonna move it slightly just slightly that way and using this edge loop and the bottom edge loop going to slide and just move that back oops move that back slightly like so and it just gives it a bit more a bit more of an organic shape of a, a lot less uh, man-made I might move that back just a touch more and there we go right now as you can see in this model here oops you can see I've got some splits in the wood there and these are very simple to make all I need to do is go into the model here and I'm going to choose my location I'm going to have the first one up here and what I will do is I will put into vertice mode so I can see the vertices. I'm going to press K and this will bring up the knife tool. And if I hover it over a vertice, you see it snaps to the vertice on there and it gives a red outline. So I click on there and then I can bring it down. And if I bring it onto an edge, it will follow the edge um, without the red outline. You can actually cut into that edge and create a vertice on that edge. And of course I'll bring it down to the bottom and then do the same going back up and into there. Now to confirm that I press the enter key and there we have it. Now all I have to do is select the central vertice on there and just bring it back. And what I will do is go to face mode, I will select all of these faces in here and I will move them to the next little um, pinky brown just next to it there and that gives it the split in the wood and we'll do a couple of these um, on here we'll do a couple more we'll do one around the back as well and vertice mode 
unselect everything, press K, select the vertex, select midpoint at the vertex, select the vertex, midpoint at the next one, and then the vertex again, enter to select, and then what I want to do is select this vertex here, and I just want to bring it back, and bring it in a little bit like so, interface mode, select each of the faces, and just move them along to the next there we go and we'll put one more in here and this one I will put and this one I will put what one is it I'm gonna put another edge loop in here I'm gonna select this at um, vertex press K and do it from there and all the way down to the bottom come on select it and it's hidden behind there so what we're going to do is I'm going to put a vert back just there. Okay, so I'm going to press K, select, select, select. Some people have trouble with the knife tool, but I've, I've never had any issues with it. It's, it's a remarkable little tool. Really helpful. Bring it back that way. And then select the faces. And move them over. And there we have it. We have our shovel all ready and created. And in short time too. Okay, let's uh, now hide these and bring our... No, let's not hide these. We'll hide the example. And I'm going to bring this one across to here. And I'm also going to bring that across to this side as our example. Now what I'm going to do, because we already have a chunk of the geometry created, I'm going to steal some geometry from the shovel that we created. So if I now go into X-ray mode and in face mode, I can then select all of these faces here and then just press plus to go up. In fact, I could have just pressed L, but uh, then shift D to duplicate go back um, press P and that separates this into a separate selection so we now have a separate handle and what I'm going to do is press N and I'm going to reset the location transforms there and we'll work on this piece now we don't need the top of the handle here so we can get rid of these X and F and then select these X and F I want this the top of this to be to be flat so uh, in x-ray mode and um, we'll go into edge select and we'll select the top there and we press s Z and 0 to bring it in and uh, there we go that should be right now what we need to do is we need to select the bottom edges here and we'll bring them down to the size that we want it on there now this piece here as you can see what we want to do in face mode is I want to press S and then press shift Z to exclude the um, Z axis and we'll bring them out and that gives us our uh, our little handle and we also wants I want to do uh, pickaxe is usually not purely circular it's actually usually uh, quite flat from one direction so I'm going to select all of it and press S Y just to bring it in and that should give us our nice little pickaxe handle okay so all we need to do now is need to create the head as as seen in this model here um, which again is very simple to do we'll go back into into edit mode on this handle I'm going to um, go into edge mode and select the top edges press shift and S cursor to select it and then press shift and A and bring in a cube Ooh, huge and we'll shrink that right way down and we'll bring it in so that it's roughly the size that we want it so I'd say we need it to about there then if I can select the top of it, I can just bring that down to about there. Now we want to reset the UVs with U and R. Hover over the UVs, press A to select them all, 
best to scale them on, on zero and bring them down to the metal. Okay, and that now gives us the cute, the uh, the headpiece of the right dimensions from that size. Now, if I go um, into top view, I can scale that on the y, y axis by pressing S and Y and bringing that right down to about there. And I'd say that would be about, about the right size for that. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yes, that's, that's, that's about the right size. Okay. Now what I want, I want to create the end pieces here for these. So on selecting both both sides, um, the faces on both sides, I will now press I and I'm going to insert that and we'll bring it into about there. And obviously that's too way too tall, so what I need to do is go into edge mode, select this bottom edge, and select this bottom edge, and we need to bring them up about there should do it. About there should be about fine. And that should give me enough of a curve. Maybe down a little bit more. To about there. And now if I go back into face mode I can select these two faces and I can press Alt E and select along normals and that will bring that out and I just want to bring it out just about that far for now because what I want to do is I want to select this piece um, go into edge mode select this piece and move that up edge loop in there and we'll bring it down a little bit select the bottom edge and again move that up and with the two edges selected here and here press S and Y to bring it out and now we have almost the right shape now I want to bring this and this face and S on the Y just to bring it in slightly because I need that a little bit narrower. And now I'm going to go in edge mode, select this edge loop all the way around here and press Control B and then just slide that along. So it gives it an extra bit of a curve. And there's that extra... That... I don't understand how that's happening. I, I, I think uh, I'm pressing the wrong... I'm pressing the right mouse button at the wrong time. Or the wrong mouse button at the wrong time. Oh, whatever. Uh, I'll just press X and I to dissolve them edges. That should do it. Okay, so we've got that side done. We now have to create our uh, lovely looking spike on the end. So three to go into face mode. And I think we need to scale that right down to about there. And press on the Z axis to bring it down. And if we then bring that all the way out to about there, let's uh, go into object mode and GX move that a little bit out of the way. Okay, and I'm going to just move that along a little bit there. Back into edit mode. Now we need to add the curve, so the curve should be. Control R and press 2. Through, um, scroll up twice to get the three edge loops. And select each edge loop. I want to bring that one up so it's fairly straight. That one's not quite so straight. And then, oops. And then this one here, just a little bit less straight. So it's there. And I think if I bring this edge out a little bit. down that will be perfect okay so let's hide this now all we need to do is we need to give this a quick bevel um, first we're going to shade smooth and auto smooth that's 
about right. Um, I think we can get away with that. That looks about right. And let's see if the bevel modifier will work this time. And there we go, one bevel modifier. And we're going to limit the method by angle 50 again. And let's bring the edges down. Point Again, it seems to be pinching those edges so um, again that's I don't like the angle the, the, the way it's um, doing the angles on this so let's manually select all of the edges there we'll get rid of these two because we don't want those two Those two and those two. Whoops. And all the way around here. And again on this one here. And uh, yeah, I've always found it. It does seem to be much. You do seem to be much better off if you if you do your own beveling. So press Control B, and we'll bring that out like so. And maybe give it one more edge loop there, and there we go. Much much better. Much much better. And there we have it. We have our low poly style shovel and pickaxe. I hope you. Uh, learned something from this video hope you enjoyed this video i uh, was trying to get it a little bit shorter than you um your usual but it doesn't seem to have worked uh um i've really got to refine my my um instructional method a bit a bit um but if you enjoyed it and you learned something from it please uh hit the like button um share it with your friends it really helps and uh, if you want to hear more about upcoming content and um uh, be notified when videos are arriving then hit the subscribe button and ring the bell the notification bell and thank you for joining me i hope to see you in the next one